This is Creepy, a podcast dedicated to sharing the most famous, chilling, and disturbing creepy pastas and urban legends in the world. Whether these stories truly happened or are simply fabrications is for you to decide. These stories may contain graphic depictions of violence and explicit language. Listener discretion is advised. For this episode, we look into four stories from the ever-expanding world of The Holders. Holder of the End In any city, in any country, go to any mental institution or halfway house you can get yourself to. When you reach the front desk, ask to visit someone who calls himself the Holder of the End. Should a look of childlike fear come over the worker's face, you will be taken to a cell in the building. It will be in a deep hidden section of the building. All you will hear is the sound of someone talking to themselves echo the halls. It is in a language that you will not understand, but your very soul will feel unspeakable fear. Should the talking stop at any time, stop and quickly say aloud, I'm just passing through, I wish to talk. If you still hear silence, flee. Leave. Do not stop for anything. Do not go home. Do not stay at an inn. Just keep moving and sleep where your body drops. You will know in the morning if you've escaped. If the voice in the hall comes back after you utter those words, continue on. Upon reaching the cell, all you will see is a windowless room with a person in the corner, speaking an unknown language and cradling something. The person will only respond to one question. What happens when they all come together? The person will then stare into your eyes and answer your question in horrifying detail. Many go mad in that very cell. Some disappear soon after the meeting, and a few end their lives. But most do the worst thing, and look upon the object in the person's hands. You will want to as well. Be warned that if you do, your death will be one of cruelty and unrelenting horror. Your death will be in that room, by that person's hands. That is object one of 538. They must never come together. Ever. Holder of Cruelty In a location where dark omens gather, and where death is cursed, call to the starless sky for counsel with the holder of cruelty. Before the tainted earth which you stand will rise up a black ancient pedestal with a deep bowl carved into the crumbling skull mounted atop. At this point, there is no return. The eyes of the decaying skull will glow with the color of blood, and in your head, a wicked yet hoarse voice will drone. Mors ultima linea rerum est. Blackening until the night defeated, in that bowl must you gather the beating hearts of the ones you hold dearest to you. Should the heart cease to beat, you will blacken. Should you fail the request, you will blacken. Should suicide become the final escape, you will blacken. With the fresh organic beating hearts gathered in the dark bowl, the blackening will cease. As the hearts liquefy, a deep, impenetrable black forms. The voice of those offered will speak to you in an unfamiliar tongue. Though incomprehensible, do not fall prey to the command of the deceiving ones. Instead, gather the corpses of five of your most hated enemies and bring them to the pedestal. Down their throats must the tainted fluid pour. Not a drop must reach the soil of earth. The five corpses will reanimate, rising as wicked puppets hailing to their cursed master, shape-shifting to twisted, blackened things. To them you must feed five young, living children. Remorse of the slightest will not be tolerated in their eyes. As the fresh blood of the children is drunk from their coursing veins, you must watch through the agony, screams, tears, and fear as they are devoured nearly whole. They will endure the pain of a century of torture as they are consumed. When the ordeal is ended, they will surround you. They demand only one more relic, your own heart. Be hasty, they do not feel pain as mortals do. 
As the unholy offering passes hands, it too will be consumed. The meal finished, the figures will merge and dissipate in a brilliant black aura, eclipsing the dark sky. The silent whispers that consume your mind form Object 55. When all has blackened, they will guide you to him. Holder of the Never Ender In any city, in any country, enter any bookstore you can get yourself into. When you walk through the door, the clerk standing at the desk will look at you with faint interest. You must ask to see the holder of the Never Ender. He will be utterly powerless before you at that moment, compelled to wander into spaces which neither you nor he should rightfully know about. But you will know of them. The door below the floor hidden by carpet, the dank and joyless corridor beneath it, and more. He will reveal all of this to you and to himself. After wandering about in confusion, he will finally lead you to someone else. It will be an elderly woman, or at least what you will sense to be one. Her skin will be free of wrinkles, her teeth a piercing ivory white, much like her hair. But despite her unnatural beauty, you will be able to tell how truly ancient she is. Her eyes will betray her fearsome senescence. She will be reading a book. Its cover will appear long faded, its binding still in place but visibly tattered. She will read its contents aloud from time to time. They will seem cacophonic, akin to the ramblings of lunatics or war cries of some mercifully forgotten tribe. They are not. You must tell her that you have been waiting for her your whole life. This will seem absurd to you, but it is not. You will realize that as soon as you utter those words. Upon your crushing realization, she will hand you a letter that seems even more yellowed and battered than the book's pages. You must ask the clerk to lead you back up immediately afterwards, or you too will become as she is. Should you read the letter, you will notice something. Despite its apparent dwarfish nature, the space within it is infinite. True, there are words upon it, but those black dots, indelible as they may be, are but small grains of sand in a boundless ocean of white. It is Object 111 of 538. It does not end, but in short time, you will wish it did. Holder of Indulgence In any city, in any country, go to any mental institution or halfway house you can get yourself to and ask the receptionist desk to meet the Holder of Indulgence. If the receptionist is male, he will lean back in his chair and breathe deeply. If the receptionist is female, she will lean forward and let out a heavy sigh. After several seconds, they will lead you outside to an old car. Sit in the front, next to the receptionist. Do not sit in the back or look in the rearview mirror at any time during the trip. If you do, well, let's just say the other passengers will not appreciate it. The receptionist may have a discussion with you, and you must answer any question he or she asks honestly unless you would like to learn what happens to liars and their tongues. There is no need to wear your seatbelt, so don't. After driving for what seems like days, the receptionist will take you to the middle of a field where an old brothel sits. The doors will open suddenly and the receptionist will be gone. If the sun is setting, get to the brothel quickly, for only the soft glow from the lanterns hanging on its porch will protect you from what lurks in the fields. When you arrive on the porch, you must not attempt to enter the brothel or peer inside. If you do, its patrons will pull you in, and you'll be unable to escape its pleasures even as they rip you apart. On the porch, you'll notice a large woman playing a flute made of human sinew and bone. Each note she plays causes the instrument to bleed heavily. You have never heard her sung before, but you'll be able to hum softly to her rhythm. After a few minutes or hours, depending on how loud you are, she will stop playing. At this point, you must remove all of your possessions, including your clothes. If you have gold or silver fillings, it is recommended you remove them as well. You should have no need to fear her if you have truly given her everything on your person. Because anything you have left on or tried to hide, she will use to bring you everlasting suffering. After you have removed all your belongings and laid them at her feet, she will nod once. Move forward and on one knee take her hand and ask, How did they find happiness? 
Suddenly her left hand will grip your arm and turn it deathly cold. You will not be able to move without tearing your arm off. The flute will begin to play itself, and through its sound you will hear their violent orgies and how they cackled with glee at their creation. You may feel yourself overcome with disgust that you will jam your fingers into your ears so deeply that you puncture your very brain. If, however, you can survive and retain your sanity, when the song is finished you will find the old woman dead and decayed, having released her grip on you some time ago. At this point you may pick up the flute, and the receptionist will return with a fresh set of clothing for you as he, she drives you back to the institution. The flute is object 192 of 538. Its song is the only thing that distracts them. More stories from the Holder series will appear in future episodes. If you'd like to learn more about the Holders before then, please visit www.theholders.org. This episode of Creepy is presented by the Greater Boston Podcast. Can I ask you a couple questions? Where is the mayor of the Red Lines? Speaking of which, any luck with the crystal? Is she still asking about it? How was I supposed to know people would find burning synthetic robot flesh so creepy? You know about the line I'm referring to, yes. Of course I'm me. Who the fuck else would I be? You think I look like a drug dealer? Do you mind if I ask you what the lottery is? What are we supposed to do without luck totems? What about the name you got from Charlotte? You think somebody had a personal motive to take it? Is it possible that I choked to death on a piece of fruitcake in a former life? Can you imagine drowning in fucking molasses? What a donkey ball's way to go, right? Are you sure you want to live on red line? There's donuts. Who gives a shit? Do you crave elegance? Are you capable of speaking without asking a question? There's an Olive Garden food truck. You're calling for violence? And is that all? Why the lottery? What kind of person pretends to be Matt Damon just so they don't have to deal with the fact that they're being a really big Ben Affleck? Are you some sort of bike courier? But where are these lunatics going with their antics? Exiled from the city? What was the first thing you noticed to suggest something might be wrong? Why didn't you implement it earlier? Is that the only competition she will face? How much wood could a woodchuck chuck if an octagon could chuck wood? Have you even seen her aura? It's pure. Does Redline have a prison? Is he going to walk around saying flippin' and gosh darn all the time? What's with the balloons, man? And the colonial guard? Who are you hiding from? Who do you think is after you? How do you convince someone to confess a secret? You're the lottery? You mean to tell me you are a Redline peace officer? I risk the ire of a paranoid, potentially volatile, heavily armed man. Is it Christmas? Am I on one of those reality shows with a hidden camera? What's their next move? What's their end game? This is... This is... This is... Greater Boston... Season 2 begins January 24th. For more information, including pictures and videos of the stories told on this podcast, or to suggest stories for future episodes, please visit us at CreepyPod on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Or email us at CreepyPod at gmail.com. All stories told on this podcast can be found at creepypastawikia.com and are protected by a Creative Commons license. Some rights reserved unless otherwise stated.